So here it says, finding the time to reach a limit in a word problem, an exponential growth or decay. So this is the formula for exponential growth or decay. Now it says plus or minus, because if it's a growth problem, then your rate will be a positive. If it's a decay problem, then your rate would be a negative, okay? So you really have to pay attention to the situation and read the paragraph thoroughly to decide whether or not this is a situation where it's growing or whether it's decaying or you know going away. So the first example says, a car is purchased for $43,000 each year it loses 25% of its value. After how many years will the car be worth 10,900 or less? Too many zeros. Um, write the smallest possible whole number answer. And that means round up, not to the nearest, okay? So when they say the smallest possible whole number, normally you round to the nearest. So if you get 2.4, it stays a two, and if you get 2.5, it goes up to three, right? But here, it doesn't matter what the decimal is. If it's two point anything, it goes up to three, okay? So 2.1 will round up to three, no matter what. If it's anything over two, it'll go up to three, okay? So that's what they mean by the smallest possible whole number. Now, here it says, a car is purchased for 43000 So let me rep tell you what all these letters represent. So P is like the present value is what the P stands for. Or like what the value now. Okay. A is the amount after. Time. So this is the value that happens after some while, okay? And then T, of course, is your time. And R is, of course, your rate. It's usually given in a percent, but you have to change it to its decimal form. You cannot plug it into the equation without converting it into your decimal form, okay? So right near, it says loses 25%, which means my rate is actually going to be a negative 0.25 okay that's that percentage as a decimal I know that right now the car costs forty three thousand dollars but after so many years it's going to cost me ten thousand or it's going to be valued at ten thousand nine hundred and so I'm going to plug everybody into the formula so a equals p 1 minus 0 0.25 because it's a negative and then raised to the power t and so then how do i solve this the first thing i got to do is divide by the 4300 so let me let me write it down first even though i'm kind of running out of room and so i'm going to do two things here i'm going to actually just subtract that 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75 and over here 10900 divided by 43000 is this or as a fraction is this number 109 over 430 and so then now we've got but the variables up in the exponent so we're going to do ln of this number and then ln of this number and then that will let me bring the t downward so then you have ln of 109 over 430 equal to t times ln of 0 0.75 then you can just divide both sides by ln of 0 0.75 and so then that cancels that and I get t equals and let's plug this in so um, fraction ln of 109 over 430 oops needs to be here and then ln 0 0.75 and we get 
seven seven which we already know is just going to round up so t is approximately five years okay so now let's look at the next example it says now you have a loan of thirty seven thousand dollars and it's made at 7.75 percent interest compounded annually after how many years will the amount due reach one hundred and one thousand dollars or more okay so you're talking about a loan here so this is different this is a value that's going to grow so my rate is going to be 0 0.0775 and it's going to be positive because it's a value that's going to grow as time goes by what i owe is going to grow as time goes by so it's going to be a positive rate um, the amount, the present value, which is what you borrowed, what you started with, is 37000 The amount after time, they want to know when it's going to be $101,000. Um, then now let's plug all those values in. So we have one zero one zero 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 equal to 37000. And then we have one plus 0 0.0775 raised to the power of t. So I'm going to divide both sides by 37,000. So then you get 101 over 37 equal to 1.0775. And then you take the ln on both sides. And then you bring the variable down. So this becomes ln of 101 over 37 equal to t times ln of this value. And then divide sides by ln of 1.0775. So you get t equals, and then you play all that in. So ln of 101 over 37 over ln of 1.0775, we get 13.45. This is gonna go up, even if it's 0.4, it's still gonna go up. So t is approximately 14 years. Now I have one more on the other page. So it says a laptop computer is purchased for $2,000. Each year, its value is 80% of the value the year before. After how many years will the laptop computer be worth $700 or less? So I know that right now it's 2000 and what I know later is that it's going to be 700 What I don't know is the rate, okay? And, and let me explain this, because the rate is the value at which it increases or decreases. But they didn't tell me what it's going to increase or decrease by all they did was tell me that it was 80 percent of the value the year before which means that this whole thing this whole thing is going to be 80 percent so this one's a little bit weird okay it's like saying that the rate is good it's depreciating right in value so the rate would be negative and it's actually a negative degrees 20 percent because if i take the whole value 100 percent of the value and i take away 20 percent of its value i end up with 80 percent right so it's telling me not necessarily the rate but it is telling me what one minus the rate is going to be okay so what it's telling me is that i'm basically using this formula 80 percent is 0 0.80 plug in my A and I'm going to plug in my P. So the rate at which it's decreasing is actually 20%. It's going to decrease 20% each year. Okay. So it's a little bit weird the way this one was worded. So I just wanted you to be careful when you do this problem versus these two. So it's telling you each year it's going to lose 25% or here when it has interest, that's how much you're adding each year, right? But here, it didn't tell me what it was going to lose, what it was going to add. It just told me what it was going to be, 
what that value is going to be each time. And so you have to keep an eye on that, especially that one, when you get this version of the answer. So I'm going to divide by that. I'm going to get 7 over 20 equal to 0 0.80 to the power t. Do the ln on both sides. Take the t down. Divide both sides by ln of 0 0.80. So you get T equals LN of 7 over 20 over LN of 0 0.80. And we get 4.7. And this one says round to the smallest possible. So it is going to round up to 5. And that is the solution there.